Shout out my elders working, trying to get together, making sure we do it better. Free us from this wider pressure. My people catching cases, double life he facing. Scattered all across the world, I see familiar faces. Say we all. We're the Hebrew Israelites. We come out here week in and week out. We, uh, we come in hopes of waking up our people and also prophesying the downfall of this unholy place. Okay, so I told you I was going to prove to you that you are an Israelite. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to give you the basics, all right? Give me Deuteronomy 28 because God said that there would be a specific set of blessings and a specific set of curses that were going to befall the people of Israel if they did not listen. Okay? Start from the top. And if you look at history, this stuff only happened to our people, so go ahead. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28 from the top. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So the, the most high God told us if we listen to what he said, if we listen to his law, statutes, and commandments, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So if we listen to God, we're going to be set up above all these nations that are on earth. So that means we're going to be above everybody. Everybody has to serve us. You know, that those were the blessings. That was one of the blessings that was going to come if we serve God. Jump to 15. So now I got to get you the flip side of that. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we don't listen to God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee so if we don't listen to God these curses are going to come upon us and overtake us till we're practically destroyed because even though we weren't wiped out as a whole people if you look at the state we're in we're still very much destroyed okay these signs were meant or I mean these curses were meant to be a sign jump to 46 Deuteronomy 28 verse 46 and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So these are going to be a sign and a wonder for our people forever to be able to identify us as the children of God and also the children of Israel. Because these were the curses that God put on his people. Okay? Go back to 16. Come verse 16. Curse shall thou be in the city and curse shall thou be in the field. So, were our people, are our people not cursed in the city, getting killed by these police? Because I know we see a lot of black people getting killed by police, but they don't really shed too much light on the Latino people that get killed by police, too. Okay? There was a, there was a mother once who had her kid in the car, and they shot her car up 64 times. You know what I'm saying? They don't talk about it as much, but guess what? That don't mean that you guys aren't going through it. So, go ahead. Yo, you ever heard of the Texas Rangers? So the Texas Rangers, they used to go around Texas picking up Mexican-Americans, taking them back to Mexico without saying, saying that they're illegal immigrants, to sending them to Mexico even though they were born in the United States. And the Texas Rangers would go around picking up Mexicans and lynching them the same way that they used to do to our black brothers. But I say, you know, even when they was outside and back in the days, the Texas Rangers were picking them up and killing them for no reason. That's just more proof that we're all going through the same things. We're all under these curses, which proves us to be the children of God. Give me 30. This is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. So that's a big problem that we have amongst our people, blacks and Hispanics. We love sleeping with our brother's wives. Now, you might not do it, but it's a very big thing that's plaguing our people. We have a bad habit of that. But guess what? That's a sin worthy of death. And guess what? A lot of our ancestors had to pay for that. Because we couldn't leave our brother's wives alone. There's plenty of women out here. Why are we sitting with our brother's wives? That don't make no sense. You get what I'm saying? Now, give me 54. Come, verse 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother. So there was a time when we were tender and delicate men. We loved each other. You see this brother, you would know, hey, that's my brother. You see this brother, you would know that's my brother. You see that brother, you would know that's my brother. And we treat him with love. We treat him with respect. We treat him with honor because those are our brothers. But now, it, one of the curses was we would have an evil eye towards our brother. That's where you get black on black violence from. That's where you get brown on brown violence from. That's where you get black versus brown violence. It all came full circle because we didn't obey the laws of the Most High God. You see what I'm saying? That was a curse 
that was going to be false for not listening to God. Okay? Give me 60. Come, verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou shalt waste, waste afraid of, and they shall cleave unto you. Also, every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, you have a relative that ever died from cancer? You haven't? But have you have a relative who's had cancer? Well, that's something that's big amongst our people too. Because my grandmother died from cancer. But you want to know what it was? My grandmother smoked cigarettes heavy. Okay, my grandmother, she ate a lot of abominable food. But that was a curse that was going to come upon us from God because he said he was going to give us all the curses that weren't written in this book. Cancer's not written in this book. HIV's not written in this book. Okay, herpes, syphilis, all these STDs that people are getting, they're not written in this book. But these are diseases that are plaguing our people. Okay, that's why you really can't beat the Bible because all the prophecies that the Bible have told us about, they've come to pass. Okay, give me 68. Come, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So, do you know what Egypt represents in the Bible? Give me Exodus 20 and 2. Country, but in this context of the Bible, when he said, I'm going to send you into Egypt again with ships, it's synonymous with something. Give me that. Huh? No. What's I'm about to read it to you right now. This is Exodus 20 and 2. This is Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. The house of bondage. What's another word for bondage? Slavery. So, go back to 68. God, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and we haven't seen our homeland since so the most high God said if we don't listen he was going to send us into slavery on ships and we would never see our homeland again God and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women and no man shall buy you and nobody's came to save us. We've been stuck here since then. Okay? Give me... God, this is Deuteronomy 28 and verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle flyer. So, what nation symbol is the eagle? America, right? And if we go back, it was Rome, it was Greece. It just so happened to be all these Edomites are the so-called white man's nations, who's the eagle. So this, he's letting you know, this is the nation that's gonna come against you from far. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So when these people came and got us, because not only did that happen to us, when they came and got us off the coast of West Africa, you wanna know what happened to y'all? It's when Christopher Columbus came over here and did that to you guys. So, not only do we fall under the curses, you guys fall under the curses. So, if I'm an Israelite, and you an Israelite, that means we're the same people. That means you my brother. You went through the same stuff that I went through. Your ancestors went through the same stuff my ancestors went through. I'm no different than you. That was it. Come, let me read verse 50. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. So they didn't they didn't spare our, our elders, nor did they spare the, spare the kids. Because guess what? They fed our babies the alligators, the conquistadors, they fed you guys as babies the dogs. These were the, we went through the same exact stuff. These are the curses that were gonna befall us if we didn't listen to God. So let me ask you a question. If we are in this predicament because we didn't listen to God, how do we get out of this predicament? No, that's not the way, because guess what? There's a lot of rich people. There's a lot of rappers. You got Jay-Z, you got LeBron James, you know, we got Lil Baby. Yep, you bring got, that up. Huh? Bring got, that up. Yeah, we got all these people, right? But guess what? What have they done to save us? Nothing. If anything, they're contributing to the detrimental destruction of our people. With the, with the rap music, with the shutting up every time it's a serious problem about black people. You know what I'm saying? They're not helping us. They not. So money and wealth, that's not the way out. 
if breaking the commandments is what got us into this situation, how do we get out of this situation? We got to keep the commandments. We got to obey God. Because if disobeying God put us in punishment, we have to obey God to get out of punishment. If you're a father, right? Or have you ever been in trouble with your parents and you did something and they put you on timeout? I know me, I got my ass whipped, so I'm just keeping on with you. Know, I did not have to go to timeout. But you want to know what happened? After you got that punishment, when you came out, you knew not to do that again, right? It's the same thing God had to do with us. Because guess what? All this stuff that, that we went through, I bet you we won't do it again once we get delivered. We got to obey God and we got to keep his commandments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you some commandments to let you know how we can start getting away from the predicaments that we're in. First, you see everything. You see what the brothers got on right here? We all got these on. Give me, 50, give me numbers 15 and 37. These are called fringes. God commanded us to wear these because we have a dress code. Because if we're a set apart people, we're supposed to be different from these nations. We should also look the part too, right? Right. So look at, read that. This is Numbers chapter 15 and verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. And they and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So, not only do we have to wear the fringes, but we all have to have a ribbon of blue on our fringes. Okay? So, that's a part of the dress code that the Most High God gave to the Israelites. We have to wear fringes. Okay? Because if we're wearing fringes, and everybody else is not wearing fringes, you're going to be able to know, hey, that's the, them the Israelites. Them God's people. That's God's dress code. You see what I'm saying? Verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So, the purpose of these is to every time you think about going off and sinning, you have to look at your fringe and look like, you know, I'm a child of God, I can't do that. I'm an Israelite, I can't do that. God said that's a no-go. These are meant to be a reminder of that. These are meant to be a reminder that, hey, we need to stay righteous and set apart from all these nations. Because guess what? All these nations are doing God knows what. Going off, freaking off, committing adultery, sleeping with other people's wives, eating abominable foods. But when you look on your fringes, you're like, I can't do that because I'm an Israelite. Okay, finish that. Verse 40, that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. Verse 41, I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of this land of Egypt. Okay, so, Wearing our fringes, that's one commandment that we have to keep, okay? Now, God told us, you eat pork? You do? You eat shrimp, crab, or lobster? You don't? Okay, so you're good on that one, but I'm gonna read to you. Give me Leviticus 11, because there, guess what? There's a dietary law we're supposed to keep, because as us being a set apart people, we can't eat what everybody eats. You see what I'm saying? Because guess what? It's bad for us. And God knows it's bad for us, why? Because he created it. You see that? Give me that. This is Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among the, all the beasts that are upon Slacken. There are These are the beasts which ye shall eat. Oh, sorry, verse 7. God. Verse 7. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed. So the swine, which is the pig, right? Pork. God. Yea, he cheweth not the cut, he is unclean to you. Pork is unclean to you. It's bad for you. You know how nasty a pig is? They eat everything. They eat everything. Why would you want to consume something that eats everything? No, I get, but you want to know something. If you want to keep the laws of God, you have to say no to her. You have to say no to her. Because guess what? If she's making pork and she's getting you to eat it, what is she doing? She's suffering sin upon you. And that's not okay. You see what I'm saying? So if you love God, you have to tell your mom, no, mom, I can't eat that. Tell her, we're not supposed to be eating that because we Israelites. That's how it's supposed to go. You get what I'm saying? Keep breathing. Give me a uh, jump down to nine. So look it, a lot of our people, right? They eat shrimp, crab, and lobster. They love it. Shellfish, oysters, you know what I'm saying? But that's bad for us. Hold on one second. Leviticus chapter 11 verse 9 These shall ye of all that are in the waters whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters 
in the seas and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So, hold that. So, uh, so, it says, anything in the water that has fins and scales, we can eat. So, what in the water has fins and scales? Fish. But not all fish. Because catfish, they have fins, but they don't have scales. So, we can't eat catfish. But, more so, we can't eat fish. Because it has fins and scales. Keep reading. Come on, verse 10. And all that have not fins and scales in the seas and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and, all, uh, and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination to you. So, anything that doesn't have fins or scales in the water, it's an abomination to you. You know what abomination is? It's despicable, it's disgusting. And God said, don't eat it. You see what I'm saying? You want to know why a lot of our people get cancer and bad diseases, colon cancer? Because we eat stuff we're not supposed to be eating. It's bad for us. God told us not to do it. And he said, if you guys do do this, he's going to send those what? Those diseases that were not written in this book. You see what I'm saying? This is stuff that our people have been suffering for a long time now. You want to know what another thing that's in the Bible that we go through? Police brutality? Give me Zechariah 11 and 5. This is Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. Whoso possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. So it says, whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. How many times do you see cops kill innocent people and all they do is get paid leave? All the time, right? That's that's a that's a curse that was gonna be called the Israelites in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? So when you look at this Bible, if we're going through all of this. What is, how do you, how do, who are we if we can look at these curses and we know this stuff happened to our people all throughout history and God said this will happen to the Israelites so that makes us who? Well, the Israelites get a brother in hand man uh, praise us. we're the Israelites because we fit the curses which are left for a sign to let us know who we are do you want to know another big sin that people are about to commit tomorrow celebrating Easter you see what I'm saying? Give me Jeremiah 10 and 1. Any of these pagan holidays that aren't written in the Bible, you're not supposed to celebrate. Easter, Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day. You're not supposed to celebrate them. They're pagan holidays. They weren't given to you by the Most High God. Just give me that. God, this is Jeremiah chapter 10 from the top. He ye the word, hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. So he's talking to the house of Israel, specifically. Verse 2, thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not, be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So, don't follow the ways of the heathen, which are these other nations that are not Israelite. Okay, keep reading. Now he's looking, because what he's about to do is he's about to go into a specific holiday that you're not supposed to be celebrating. Go ahead, read that. Verse 3, for the customs of the people are vain, for one cut of a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They take it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That it move not. What does that sound like to you? What holiday does that sound like to you? I'm sorry, bro. I'm you want me to read it again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Nah, verse three. For the cousins of the people are vain. For one cut of a tree out of the forest. What could... It's Christmas. You see what I'm saying? So the Bible specifically telling us not to celebrate Christmas. But we sit out here and, and, and be blasphemous and call it Christ's birthday. That's how disrespectful we are. You know what I'm saying? But the Bible tells us don't celebrate Christmas. God said don't do it. But we do it anyway. This is, these are the reasons why we're in the predicaments that we're in right now. You want to you know what God, you want to know how God feels about these feast days? Hold that real quick. Give me Amos 5 and 21. This is how God feels about holiday. Keep teaching. Okay, go ahead. This is Amos 5 and verse 21. I hate, I despise your feast days. So he says, I hate and I despise your feast days. 
which are the holidays that these people celebrate. Because guess what, on all these holidays, what is the main thing people do? They cook, they feast, right? Start that from the top again, say that. give me that again. John, Amos 5 and verse 21. I hate and despise your feast days. I hate and despise your feast days. This is what God said, God hates these days. So Easter, he hates Easter. Christmas, he hates Christmas. Halloween, oh he, oh yeah, he hates Halloween. You see what I'm saying? He hates these feast days. So guess what? If God hates their so-called feast days, how do you think we're supposed to feel about it? We're supposed to hate them too. God hates Easter, I hate Easter. God hates Christmas, I hate Christmas. God hates Mother's Day and Father's Day, I hate Mother's Day and Father's Day. Keep reading. John, and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. So, your sacrifice that you guys are going to give to me on these false, fake days that you guys are supposed to have as your feast days, he's not going to hear none of that. Because guess what? They're pagan. They have nothing to do with him. His spirit's not dwelling in that because those are the days that he gave us. Keep reading. Come. Neither will I regard the peace offering of your fat beast. So, anything that you guys have to offer me on these feast days, I don't, he don't want no parts of it. He's not going to hear it. He's not going to accept it. He don't want to deal with it. That's more reason why we need to stop celebrating these pagan holidays. They have nothing to do with us. They were forced upon us in what? Slavery. You see what I'm saying? So, you got one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a piece up, brother, because the church teaches us Easter, right? Easter Sunday, right? Where, you know, Jesus rose up the third day and that's why they celebrate Easter and this and that. They get a... The reason where they get Easter, or the reason why they get Easter is because of Acts 12. It's a mistranslation, right? Because the, the word Easter is in the Bible, but it's really just talking about the Passover, right? That that was happening, right? I'm going to start from Acts... I'm going to start at Acts 12 from the top. Now about the time Herod, the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it please the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Right, so the days Yeah, so like so the days of unleavened bread are is is the you know, the feast of Passover essentially, right? I'm gonna keep reading, right? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four on corn corn. Yes, like you, Cordonians of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, right? So it says Easter, right? But real in the in reality, right, it's supposed to say Passover, right? So it's just a mistranslation. That's why the church is like, oh, we gotta keep Easter because it says Easter in the Bible. No. It's really talking about Passover, man. So we gotta stop, you know, really, you know, like he was bring out, following Easter and the Easter bunny and these Easter eggs and all that, you know what I'm saying? So, got to stop following these heathen customs, cause like he's the, like the brother said, Easter goes back to Ishtar, which is a goddess, right? So, that's the god. That's you know that's evil, man. So that's all. And it's kind of ironic, right? That if you look at it, Easter, they they always have it in the same week of what? The Passover. They do that on purpose. You see what I'm saying? See, we have a seven day feast. Passover feast of eleven bread is the same thing. But Easter always seems to fall on one of those days. You know, it's always that it's always that following Sunday. They do that on purpose. You see what I'm saying? Because they want to get us to go off and not celebrate the days we're supposed to celebrate, but celebrate their days. Not knowing that the Most High God is going to punish us for doing that. You see what I'm saying? Because when we celebrate Easter, what is that? That's idolatry. Because like you said, the, 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 the goddess Ishtar, she's a fertility goddess. You know what she represents? Having sex and having babies. You think that's something we're supposed to be celebrating? Absolutely not. See what I'm saying? So yeah, like, that's not something we're supposed to be celebrating. But you see how it's always some wickedness that's installed with these holidays? Like Christmas, that goes back to Nimrod. You think we're supposed to be celebrating Nimrod? I don't even know what Nimrod is. Nimrod, he was, he, he was, a, he, he's, he's a, he's a person from way back in the day, right? And basically, his, his birthday is Christmas. And they tried to lie and mix it up and say it was Christ's birthday. 
but it's not Christ's birthday. Because if you read the scriptures, you know that Christ was born sometime in the run of spring. But Christmas falls in the winter. But guess what? You want to know what actual feast day falls around Christmas? The feast of dedication. You see, they want you to celebrate Christmas instead of celebrating your high holy day. So you have to understand a lot of stuff is orchestrated on purpose against us to keep us in sin. Because guess what? If you keep us in sin, you keep us down. If we come out of sin, guess what? We get back to the top again. So you got one for me? So like he said, we should be keeping the feast of dedication, right? Which is in winter, right? Not Christmas, right? But the feast of dedication, let's read it. This is John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. So the feast of dedication is in wintertime. You want to know who kept the feast of dedication? Christ kept the feast of dedication. He kept the Passover. He kept Pentecost. He kept all the holy days that we were instructed to keep, teach. What to keep, excuse me. But you want to know why? Because Christ was an Israelite too. You see what I'm saying? So guess what? He kept the laws because guess what? He was a perfect example of how we're supposed to live. You see what I'm saying? So when we sit here and we misconstrue his words and we think it's okay to celebrate Christmas and all that, then you're not a follower of Christ. You can't be. Because Christ didn't celebrate Christmas. He didn't celebrate Easter. He kept the Passover. He kept the Feast of Unleavened Bread. He kept the Feast of Dedication. So we have to come back into our heritage and we have to come back into being who we really are. Shout out my elders working, trying to get together, making sure we do it better. Free us from this wider pressure. My people catching cases, double life he facing. Scattered all across the world, I see familiar faces. Say we all.